How you doing, guys? What's up? What's up? My name is Eric Fuchsangle. I'm very happy to be here today to talk to TEDx Bird Community College Education. It's going to rock. <laughs> yeah, all right. Crowd's pumped up. Cool. Awesome. Um, that's my, my man Pete just spoke. Pete and me are real good friends. We've worked together in environmental work for a very long time. Uh, he's a best buddy of mine. My man Matt Spitz here, too, another good friend of mine. Um, anyway, so. So I am the executive director of an organization called MIVO, or the Mawa Environmental Volunteers Organization. Uh, I'm the executive director of that organization, and we are a youth-led not-for-profit organization, which means we're led by high school, college, and graduate students. We're led by young people with young spirits that want to change the world to build a better future for future generations. Normally when I come and talk to people, I talk about stuff like this, talk about tires, talk about the impact of illegal trash dumping on communities, talk about pollution and problems in the, in the global system and also in the local system. But today, I'm not going to talk so much about tires. I'm going to talk about the young people that help take these tires out of the environment and help engage their community in making it more sustainable and building a better future. These are just an example of some of our young volunteers. These people are leaders activists, they're students like you guys, they're in high school, they're in college. So what's the deal with this organization? I started it when I was 16 years old. I was a junior in high school. That's me sporting that fine cap there with that, trash, with that black trash bag there. That's a group of my best friends. In October of 2008, my best friends and I decided there was a problem in our community. That problem to us was trash. We saw it everywhere. People littered our community, they littered county parks, they littered state parks, and people just didn't seem to realize that garbage had such a huge impact on the ecosystem and animals and species that live there, and the people that live around these places. So we decided to start an organization called MIVO, the Mawa Environmental Volunteers Organization, longest day we could think of. <laughs> um, and we decided to organize kids to take action to clean up trash. Since we started MIVO, we've grown a lot. We've had over 1,500 volunteers come out and volunteer with us. We've organized over 130 volunteer events. We've cleaned up thousands of pounds of trash. We've educated thousands and thousands of people on the importance of environmental sustainability and living a better lifestyle for the future. We do things like invasive species removal. We've built miles of hiking trails. We've restored miles of badly soil eroded areas. We've distributed 270 recycling bins to schools, homes, communities, public parks, and many other areas. We work with different types of communities of people, and we engage everyone in joining on this movement of building an environmental and sustainable future. But for all the things that we've accomplished, the real change makers in our organization are the young people. This is Catherine Hansen, and I want to give you an example of the type of leader that Catherine became just last summer. Catherine got out of high school. She's 18 years old in this picture. This was last summer. She had no experience in environmental work, no experience in community organizing, no experience in getting engaged in changing society. But she had an interest. Her interest was the environment, generally. Anything about it, trees, nature, being outdoors. That's what she was interested in. <coughs> so she joined Mevo, and she told me, she said, Eric, I want to figure out how I can make a difference in communities, but I don't know how. So at MIVA, what we did is we taught her about the basics. We taught her about environmental issues, environmental problems. We taught her about how we take action, how we engage communities. We taught her how to email people, how to call people up, how to get people to call her back, how to get donations, how to network, these type of basic skills that you need to get people on board with your project. And that education that we gave her lasted two days. We give two days of formal education training. And after that, what we said to her, I said, all right, Catherine, now that you got your education two days worth, <laughs> time to get started. <laughs> and so for most volunteers that join on with us, they get shocked. They're like, what do you mean it's time to get started? I should have like a couple more weeks of training. So no, man, that's not how it works. The best way to learn is to actually take action, to actually do something and learn as you do it. That's how we learned at Mevo. That's how I learned when I started the organization. And that's how we train our leaders. We give them this base knowledge, and then we tell them to go ahead and do something. So for Catherine, she started this thing, she planned this project called the Tired of Tires Trash Cleanup. 
It was going to be the biggest volunteer event all summer. She was going to bring out tons of people into the forest of Stag Hill in Mawa, New Jersey, and remove illegal trash dumping that had been building up there for the past 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Piles of garbage. It looks like a landfill above ground. And she, after two days of training, was going to organize a huge event to get people out there to clean up this garbage. This is what Stag Hill looks like. This is what large parts of Stag Hill look like. It's a big task. And you can't clean up this amount of garbage with just three or four people. You need an army. And I'm happy to say that Catherine did a great job. She brought out over 50 people to volunteer that day. She secured donations from many different groups. She brought out tractors and equipment, dump trucks. She brought out tons and tons of garbage she collected. Over 600 tires in six hours. It's 100 tires an hour. So much garbage. Trash, commingled recycling, electronics, refrigerators, you name it. We pulled it out of those woods that day. And Catherine had a huge success of an event. And this was her very first time taking action on her own project, leading her own event and planning her own thing. So people always ask me, they go, Eric, how do you do this? How do you get people to change the world? How do you get them to take action? <laughs> the kids today, they, they don't care about anything. They're not in power. They don't care about issues. They play video games all day, and they sit inside. And I say, well, that's what I used to do, man. <laughs> I used to play tons of video games. Until I turned 16, I said I wanted to get outdoors and do something different. So people always ask me, they go, Why do, how do you get people engaged? How do you make them take action? Because that's what we need. We need change makers. We need people to make a difference. So there's three things that I do. And that if any of you take these three tips, you could change the world. So one of them is called identify youth leaders. And it could be adult leaders too, but I like youth. <laughs> so when I say identify youth leaders, I mean, you allow people that w have a passion to take action to lead. Whether that means that you're the youth leader that wants to take action, or maybe you're a teacher that has a student that you want to take action, that wants to take action. You identify them based on their passion and their interest in something. It could be anything. It could be a social cause. It could be a non-social cause. Whatever it may be, they might have a passion about something. And the way, what you have to do is identify that person. And when you identify that person, you have to support them. When we started Mevo, we said, we're going to pick up trash. And I told my mom, I walked home, I said, Mom, I'm going to start an organization that picks up garbage for free. <laughs> you imagine this concept? My mom and dad are like, all right, uh, Eric, that's not, I mean, you need like a summer job. Like, but you know what they said to me? They said, Eric, we're going to support you in this because you care about this, and we believe that your cause and your passion is important to us. So that's what we call when I say identify youth leaders. It means allow a young person to take the lead. Allow someone who's 16 years old to stand up and take action. The next step is once you identify a youth leader and you let them take action, let them try to do something to make a difference, you need to be the teacher. And when I say be the teacher, it can happen in any direction, at any age. A, young, a person who's 16 can be a teacher to other 16-year-olds, to people who are older than them. A people that is someone who's 70 years old that's really knowledgeable on everything can teach younger people. Whatever, whatever you want it to be, you need to be the teacher. What this means is whatever that, whoever that person is who's a leader, you need to provide them with that basic education in some way. They need to know what, glo what global climate change is. They need to know what sustainability is. They need to know what helping the environment really means. But not too much, just enough so that they can feel like they know a little bit of something so they can actually take action. And once you become this teacher role to this person, you need to empower them. You need to show them by the way you live that they can take, make a difference. And this is what I call living your values. You need to live the values you're teaching someone. If you're teaching them about environmental sustainability, then you should be thinking about this in your daily life. You should be considering your impacts every day. And they shouldn't see you being hypocritical in the way you're living, because they're going to look up to you to be their teacher and their mentor. And again, this can happen at any age, whether you're a young person teaching another young person, whether you're an older person teaching a younger person. <coughs> the last point about being a teacher is that you need to let the young people go. You can't control what they do, and you need to let them have successes and have failures. So as a young person, I had a lot of teachers throughout my entire life right now. Through six years of work, many different people have taught me a lot of different things. Young people have taught me and old. 
But the one thing that I always had for myself was successes and failures. There were certain moments that I had huge successes, and there were certain moments where we didn't win. Well, I had, a, I had a volunteer event once where one person came out, me, <laughs> okay? And I led that volunteer event on principle, <laughs> on principle. <laughs> and now we have volunteer events. We had an event last night with over 150 people. So you have successes and you have failures. And if you are a leader and you're leading people, you need to recognize that even if you have a failure, it's not the end. There's still so many more successes ahead. But at the same light, if you have successes, you have to realize that every other day, there's going to be failures. So these three points, I know they're holistic, and they're overall, and they're big, and they're vague. But the truth of the matter is, if you live by these values, and you allow young people, old people, to take action, you believe in them, you offer your knowledge and support when you can, and you empower them to have their own successes and failures, this is how you build a movement to change the world, and this is how we can build a sustainable future. Thank you guys very much.